Hey, good morning. Good morning. Oh, now we are. I think we're on now. Or we have been. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday, June 29th, 2023. I'm Pastor Tim Marvel. I'm the pastor at the Allen Park Presbyterian Church, and this is our daily news and devotions that we do as a production of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church in Allen Park, Michigan. On Mondays through Thursdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, we go live on our Facebook page, and then we put this up for later viewing both on that page and our YouTube channel. If you're joining us live, good morning. I think it's mostly morning. We have people kind of watch us from all over the place. And we also need to know that we have probably twice or to three times as many people that watch us during the course of the day. They watch our watch it uh, afterwards. So uh, we're so thankful that uh, we've been given this technology and this time to get together. I hope your day is going to be great. But we're going to open it up in the Lord with our devotions here in just a second. I'm going to go down here and see if we only have a couple people with us right now. But we have Tracy Crutz. Good morning to you. And Sandy, good morning to you. I think uh, Carrie Van is with us, our very, very able uh, helper here. So we're still in the smoke here in Southeast Michigan. Lots of people coming on now. Hi, Barry and Margo and Judy Martin. Good to see you. I'm excited today because, as always, what Thursdays are my Fridays. I take Friday off when I can, when there's nothing going on. And um, so I'm at I'm at my home right now in my home office. And after this, uh, Meg and I have to pack up. We have to. We get to pack up and head off to the cottage where we're going to be. Now I'm going to come back on Sunday, so I'll be with you preaching, and then uh, return back to the lake. A lot of people say. That's crazy, <laughs> but you know what? Uh, I just we just enjoy worship, and and uh, and there'll be times when we have to do recorded, and not do that. But we're not at that point. We're not we're not in one of those times right now. So we're going to enjoy live worship as much as we can. So, oh, got a call coming in. Hold on. My Uncle Dick, he should be watching this, right? I got to talk to him in a little bit here. So he's already up at the lake. So we have this little family thing going on. It's also Dick Marvel's birthday on July 3rd. So we go up there and celebrate that. And uh, I'm going to have, I'll probably see a couple of my kids. I'll probably see Josh, our oldest, who lives in Muskegon. And Tom, down in Houston, is coming up. So... Uh, let's see here. We've got Don Jones and Katie are with us. Good morning. Larry and Carolyn, my Aunt Mary. You never just get me. You just kind of get my whole family <laughs> whenever we come through here. Linda Wolf. Good morning. Hi, Bob. Paul Wolf and Norma Bentley. Good morning. We have 11 folks. Not as many today, but it's only 9 o'clock, so we'll see what happens. So it is, it's also... Um, you know, we're coming into a holiday weekend, so it's 4th of July. And relating to that, um, you know, um, be easy on the office between now and Wednesday. Um, we have, uh, we have folks that are, that are there. Um, it's a full work day today, and then we have a half office day. Um, uh, but we're encouraging people to take as much time as they can this holiday weekend. And the office will be closed on both Monday and Tuesday in honor of that holiday. So um, it's a good sabbatical for a lot of our uh, church employees too. So there we are. I will always be available if something happens, right? Um, but uh, but we pray that everybody's going to have a very safe weekend. And I know a lot of people travel on this weekend. So our prayers go out for the people who will be on the road, on the road, or in the air. Oof, that's another thing. All right, let's see. Anybody else? Joanne Butters is with us. And Ken Woods, happy, happy Thursday. Good to see you. 
All right. Well, we have about 16. That's good, right? Now, stuff going on Thursday. Um, as I said, coming into the 4th of July weekend, nobody plans an awful lot um, because or they plan to, you know, to, to have a good time. So um, we don't have a lot planned here. But you can always go to www.allenparkpres.org, and there you can access so many things, everything that you would like to know about the church. But uh, there's also calendars there, so you can see what's going on. And we are going to have, um, we are going to have um, worship on Sunday at 10, so come on down, see us if you happen to be in town. We'll celebrate with you, have a couple I'm not going to call them, you know, because it, it is a worship service, right? We have we have um, patriotic hymns that honor both God and country. How's that? That's the best way to say it. So come on by and see that. If you can't join us or if you're lucky enough to be going somewhere and uh, you want to watch, you can always watch us right here on this Facebook channel. And also, our YouTube channel. So, all right. It is time to move into our devotions now. And... Uh, you know, I, um, I shared yesterday that uh, I never really had an, an appreciation for the Old Testament until I got really into seminary. You know, I just concentrated on that New Testament. I, in fact, I can remember uh, not long before I went to seminary, but telling my our pastor at our church saying, you know, you know, what do we even do those New Te those Old Testament readings for? You know, I didn't understand <clears throat> that there's a movement in uh, in worship and that the Old Testament is kind of your usually the entree that we use into our gospel reading so those are things that um, I didn't realize until I and then then I then I started to appreciate the beauty of, of the stories you know and the way that they're told and how they're told and there's an awful lot of pages to read in the Old Testament and I have to say that I'm better now um, but I got a ways to go. I know that there's other people that are just so much better than me understanding about Bible content. And I'm not saying that from a standpoint of, um, you know, knowing the Bible, but uh, knowing the interactions, but also being able to um, overlay and say, hey, you know, we heard that we hear this in Isaiah, but where else do we hear this? Oh, yeah, we hear this in Daniel, too. So um, that, that, that only comes with time and peace and patience. All right. Thank you very much, Carrie, for posting that stuff up. Thank you, Judy, for uh, wishing us a good time. But how about we just read some God's Word for us today? And Because I'm really excited about the Old Testament stuff we're going to read today. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear my head by doing my breathing discipline slash exercise. And um, I breathe in for a count of five, hold it for a count of five, exhale for five. Just letting everything, just let God, God in and invading everything. If you'd like to participate with me, feel free. Here we go. Come Lord Jesus. Our opening devotion today is Psalm 36. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. Transgression speaks to the wicked deep in their hearts. There is no fear of God before their eyes, for they flatter themselves in their own eyes, that their iniquity cannot be found out and hated. The words of their mouths are mischief and deceit. They have ceased to act wisely and do good. They plot mischief while on their beds. They are set on a way that is not good. They do not reject evil. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds, your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All the people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life, in your light, we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. Do not let the foot of the arrogant tread on me, 
or the hand of the wicked drive me away, there the evil doers lie prostrate. They are thrust down, unable to rise. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. You know, um, I don't know whether it's the majority of people today, but um, one of the things is, as I continue my journey, uh, my spiritual journey, to, trying to, uh, is that putting God first, you know, is this thing that I've only been able to do somewhat successfully as I matured in my spirituality. Again, as I say, we all, don't we all start thinking, hey, God's this big thing that, that we ask stuff for, right? And, and sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. So that causes that that's a that, that causes us just to have this in and out relationship with God. And as we become adults, it almost becomes what I call a coat rack, uh, you know, spirituality. You know, we walk in, and um, you know, as as we walk in to the church, you know, we take off our secular hat, our everyday hat, put it there, and then we put on our spiritual robe. Right, we're there for an hour, and then when we walk out, we take off that spiritual robe and we put it back on our secular hat, and the two don't meet. Right, so um, how do we weave? <clears throat> how do we weave our belief and faith um, into our everyday life? Right, and eventually let that rise to the top, so that that is the lens through which we see the world. Um, that's that's like a really high level of spirituality, and sometimes I feel I'm there, and then sometimes I realize I'm not, you know. But uh, but I think that this is this person that's seeing and realizing that there's a lot of people that just close themselves off to the, maybe they believe, maybe they're at temple, right? Maybe they come to church, but again, they they take they take that secular hat off, they put on that spiritual robe for the time they're there, and then they take and then nothing that they do in their life necessarily represents what uh, God's will is. So, anyway, enough on that. Deep thought sometimes, right? I hope so. Now we're going to continue in first sec. Now remember, Samuel is an important character. We got first Samuel and second Samuel. And, uh, you might say, well, what's in 2 Samuel? Because we're going to hear about Samuel's getting really old, right? Uh, he's, uh, he's a judge um, for, the, for the, and he also was a priest as he came up. Remember, he came up under Eli. And remember, the reason why Samuel got, in, got his position was Eli had kids that were priests, and they were abusing that privilege. They were taking things from people. And God told Eli, you know, uh, your family's going to be punished for this. So Samuel enters into the story. It's his little boy. Well, now Samuel's old. So let's see what happens here. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. When Samuel became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn son was Joel, and the name of his second, Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not follow in his ways, but turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us, like other nations. But the thing displeased, displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, Adonai. And the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you. But they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt to, the day, uh, to this day forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice only. You shall solemnly 
warn them, and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported to the words of the Lord. I'm sorry. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we also may be like other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to their voice and set a king over them. Samuel then said to the people of Israel, Each of you return home. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So the, the meta movement here is God, um, God has given the people of Israel, their own nation, right? He's taken them out of slavery, led them through the wilderness, wandered quite a bit, and then they get there, and then as succeeding generations come, they have this falling away from God, um, or true worship of God, and picking up the worship of other cultures that are around them. Punishment for that. Um, Things are reset. Things seem to be going well, but, but God points these judges, right? And uh, Samuel is a judge. And he's human. And he seems to be pretty good. But his sons, just like Eli was a great person, his sons weren't very good. So what do the people do? They say, you know what? We don't want to judge anymore. We want to be like the other nations and have a king. Samuel realizes that this is a bad idea. And it angers him that they're doing this. And God tells him, look, it's not you, it's not you, right, that they're disappointed in. It's me. So if they want a king, they can have a king, but remind them that uh, that comes with a cost. It's a cost of freedom, and it's there's a tremendous expense financially. But that freedom is the big thing, right? You will lose the ability to do what you want because the king will tell you what to do. And the king will have the ability to take your sons and your daughters away from you and put them into his service. And the things that you slave for and work hard for, uh, the king gets to take 10% of that and give it to uh, whoever he wants to, including himself. So anyway, he says, well, that's what you want. So that's what we get. And uh, that's the story that's continuing. Now, you're going to have to keep reading that for yourself because we won't be together to do devotions next week because it's the 4th of July. So you can read, continue to read forward, right? And so, but this m meta movement that I talked about was, you know, one-to-one um, -one interrelationship with God, then judges, you know, and priests, and then well, now we're moving over into kings. And... So we're going to hear about Saul, the first king, and then we're going to hear about David, and right? all these things start to come in. And if you wanted to look from a historical standpoint, you can take this and you can look at First and Second Samuel, right? And then you can move over into Kings, First and Second Kings, or First and Second Chronicles. They kind of tell the same story, but it's going to that's going to be a lot of kings, and I'll I'll tip my hand because we won't be together. 
But just remember this, when you think about kings of Israel, right, there was only a couple that were good. And, uh, and even that, they had tremendous flaw flaws. Saul starts out as a wonderful king and ends up as a terrible person. And uh, David ends up as, it starts out as a wonderful king and then has a, a terrible, a terrible uh, personal decision that he makes. All right. But you got to, you can read that for yourselves. Okay. We're going to move into the New Testament finally here. And I'm only a minute behind. So, um, this is uh, the Acts of the Apostles. And we're in the 6th chapter, 15th verse. We're going to go up into the 7th chapter, 16th verse, which is actually... It's not too long. So we heard about Stephen, right? The apostles were saying, we're supposed to bring the good news to people, and yet we're spending all our time here um, judging, you know, making things. And the, the complaint was about that different uh, sects where widows were getting preferential treatment. So they make the deacons, and Stephen has provided us the shining example of the deacons. And uh, since they've been going out... Uh, he gets called before, right, the, the temple uh, court and uh, is accused of blasphemy, right, of following this Jesus of Nazareth. So um, the council is there. They've made the um, allegation, and little Stephen is going to reply to that today. So let's listen for the word of the Lord. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Remember, this is the, the glowing. It's not him and him alone that's there. Then the high priest asked him, Are these things so? And Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our ancestors Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. And he said to him, Leave your country and your relatives and go to the land that I will show you. Then he left the country of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After his father died, God had him move from there to this country in which you are now living. He did not give him any of it as a heritage, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as his possession and to his descendants after him, even though he had no child. And God spoke in these terms that his descendants would be resonant aliens in a country belonging to others, who would enslave them and mistreat them during 400 years. But I will judge the nation that they serve, said God, and after that they shall come out and worship me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of the circumcision. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day, and Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob of the twelve patriarchs. The patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt, but God was with him and rescued him from all his afflictions and enabled him to win favor and to show wisdom when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who appointed him ruler over Egypt and over all his household. Now then came a famine throughout Egypt and Canaan, and great suffering, and our ancestors could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our ancestors there on their first visit. And on the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and invited his father Jacob and all his relatives to come to him, seventy-five in all. So Jacob went down to Egypt. He himself died there, as well as our ancestors, and their bodies were brought back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abram had bought for a sum of silver from the sons of Hamor in Shechem. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So you guys got to keep reading this, right? But this is, this is Stephen speaking before an accusing body that wants nothing but to kill him. And he's given the power through the Holy Spirit to say, wait a second, this is what we have in common. This is our common heritage going way back to our patriarchs and forefathers. He's tying together the religious experience and history of the nation of Israel 
And if you continue to read in the future days, you'll find out that he ties this into the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, so that it's not something new. It's a continuation. It's a continuation. All right. So we'll move on here to our, we're, we're in Luke and uh, 22nd chapter, verse 24 through 30. And um, we're seeing the events that Luke is giving us that we've been reading through have been the nights uh, uh, right of the Holy Week, basically, and, and, and we're into Maundy Thursday, right? They've had the Last Supper. Um, they've talked about the fact that Jesus is going to be um, handed over, uh, betrayed, you know, and um, Luke told us yesterday that as he served that, they all looked around. Who could it be? Who could it be? So now they're moving, now they're moving along, well, probably with a number of glasses of wine in them. So they're starting to uh, uh, bicker about themselves. I don't think it started off as nasty. I just think they... I think um, that as the night went on, they were saying, well, who are you to think that you're more important than me? So maybe they got into this. this that's how they got into this conversation that we're told about in Luke's gospel. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. A dispute also rose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest, would be the greatest apostle. Then he said to them, The king of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? It is not the one at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by my side in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has confirmed on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table, in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here we're seeing Jesus uh, talk about this dispute over who's greatest, and how does he silence it? You know, he says, you're thinking in human, the worldly terms. You know, the, the world that says that power is everything. And he says, you know, if you were a king, the king of the Gentiles, that's non-Jewish people. If you were a king of the Gentiles, you would lord the fact that you had this power over them. But you know what? They have people. They have people who have power over them, and they're called benefactors. Right? So, leverage. Think about this. Um, we, you know, gospel on one hand, newspaper on the other, like Karl Barth always said. Uh, think about the uh, Putin over in Russia, right? It, he's got a lot of power, right? But he keeps that power how? With the oligarchs, you know, the billionaires that he's made by taking, allowing them to make exorbitant sums of money with opportunities that aren't available to everybody else, right? So he's got to answer to them. He, I think he's feeling some of the pressure right now. But Jesus says, so that's how the world works, but not with you guys, right? you got to become like the youngest, like the, the least wise, the most vulnerable, right? And you also have to serve. You have to be a servant leader. And that's a whole term that, you know, you can unpack that for days. What is it to be a servant leader? And it's it's turning the tables over, literally, right? The one who is at the table or the one who serves. So I'm demonstrating here I'm serving you, but we're all there at that table. So that you we're going through here, so that we can inherit the kingdom that God has created, right? And we may eat and drink at that table in the kingdom. All right, that's enough for right now. See, you're getting an extra dose of that stuff. Yes, thank you, Carrie, for putting that in. Let's see who we have here. Hi, Barbara Wolf.
Hi, Ann Winslow. Thank you. All right. I think we caught up. So, yeah, this Joseph story, um, you know, we touch on it. It's the retelling that Stephen tells us. But if you go back into Genesis, read it, you know, and read it, you'll see that, you know, what started that whole thing was envy. And maybe a little bit of privileged, <laughs> you know, Joseph was the favorite of his father, right? And, uh, but he also had these visions and he was kind of lording it over him. So that why did he end up, why did he end up in Egypt? Why did God create that opportunity? Because he created envy in his brothers. So, and that, that's caused problems, you know, throughout. So we need to be aware of that, you know. We got to be happy for people when they achieve. We really do. Even though it, we might feel like we deserve that. You know, why did they get that? We deserve that. I worked harder for it. You know, that's one of the things we'll know about our spiritual um, enlightenment and journey is when we can have things like that happen to us. And we go, no, I'm really happy for them. I'm really happy for them. Next time, you know, or, or another time or something else will come to me because God will provide that. So, all right, let us pray. And uh, we're going to continue to pray in earnest for all who are sick and need healing. And uh, we're going to pray for safety for all. I'm going to put a little extra prayer in for animals that are scared of fireworks because we have one of those. And man, they just, we would just pray that, uh, that uh, well, let's just put it this way. Sometimes I drive around aimlessly on. Um, on, uh, on 4th of July, uh, after dark, just, to, just to get, so the dog has, doesn't have to listen to all the fireworks. So, anyway, let's pray. Heavenly Lord, we come to you in weakness because in our, when we realize our weaknesses, when we realize the things that we can't do, we can, real, uh, we can understand that when they become real, when we're gifted with them, that it represents your power in this world. And we still believe you are there with us each and every day. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of your Son. Thank you for the scriptures that we've read today. As uh, we approach uh, a coming holiday weekend, the first thing, Lord, that we pray for is safety for all. There's going to be a lot of people on the roads and traveling on the air, and we've already seen that there's been... Uh, some pretty big delays and cancellations uh, for people that are flying. So, Lord, uh, we just pray for their safety and their peace and their patience that everyone will arrive at their destination safely. And then uh, we pray for safety as people will be celebrating this weekend, that uh, there will be no injuries. Lord, as uh, fireworks are lit off, we would just pray that there be no accidents. And Lord, that the people who experience trauma, the people and the animals who experience trauma with fireworks, Lord, that they will find a place where they can uh, enjoy the enjoy the holiday. Uh, and Lord, that there won't be traumatic experiences that are brought to light in their lives. We thank you for the freedoms that you've granted us that we'll be celebrating this weekend. The founding of this country, which was founded on the principle that all men are created equal, that we can see that this is a foundation of our experience in God through Christ. And uh, so as we reflect on that today, as we celebrate the birthday of the United States, let us understand that uh, we still have a lot of work to do on that equality basis. And that's worldwide. And Lord, we pray for the sick. We continue to pray that uh, people who are ill will gain health. We pray uh, for Jeff, we pray um, for Don, we, pay, we pray for Chuck, Lord, all, we pray peace, healing, strength, and comfort. We do ask all of this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Amen. God bless you all. I love you. God loves you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. Join Carrie and Suzanne for the Good News Live tomorrow as an intro into the 
holiday weekend, and we're, they have uh, wonderful guests that will talk about uh, the recently completed mission trip down to Pikeville, Kentucky, and, um, and uh, just some amazing experiences of God that they had. All right. So God bless you all. Have a great day and following week in the Lord. Remember, I'll be at church on Sunday uh, and, uh, and uh, bringing, uh, worshiping with you and uh, look forward to seeing you. God bless. Bye-bye.